What's up guys, Max here, and today we are starting a new video series. As some of you know, I recently purchased a 2009 GMC Sierra uh, 2500 SLT, and it's an extended cab truck, but it's really, really lacking in a few key things, and it's completely stock, which, not acceptable. So today is the first video, first part of the video series for doing an infotainment upgrade on my Sierra. Now the problem with the stock GM infotainment system is that it's neither informative nor entertaining. And so today the first step we're going to do is we're going to build a combination subwoofer box, amplifier enclosure, and storage bin. Uh, and I'm going to take you guys with the GoPro into the truck here in a minute and show you kind of what the issue is. But the big picture idea is underneath the rear bench seat that folds up, we're going to build a truck wide enclosure. Uh, on one side of it, it's going to house a 12 inch Rockford Fosgate uh, subwoofer with a Rockford Fosgate amp to drive that subwoofer, and the other side is going to be storage. Now, all you really need for this project is a 4x8 sheet of half inch MDF. I paid $21 for it at Home Depot yesterday. You need one of these guys. This is a subwoofer terminal adapter. Basically, this allows you to have uh, and you know subwoofer terminals on your box. I uh, paid about five bucks, five or six bucks for this uh, on Amazon. And then I'm using this. My truck is black on black, and so we're going to be using black speaker carpet to wrap the box and the storage area. And I'm going to show you guys how we do that here in a minute. This is, I believe, 15 feet or 18 feet uh, by three feet of black speaker carpet. And I believe it cost me somewhere in the range of $20. Uh, it's not a huge expense. So this entire box is gonna be built for under 50 bucks. It's gonna give us a viable storage solution. I want it to look factory. I want it to look out of the way. I wanna be able to put my guns into it if I need to. I wanna be able to store my, my toe strap, my jack, everything I like to carry in my truck in this area plus we want to have some banging beats and so that's what we're going to do so here we are in the back of my truck and you can see everything is already a mess uh but the issue is in the past i've kept my jumper cables everything in this toolbox and the toolbox has sat underneath the seat but watch what happens when i try to push it in it doesn't fit this tunnel is kind of ridiculous it like spreads out all the way across uh, and widens out right here um, and that makes it really difficult to actually store anything and so the plan is we're going to put a 12 inch subwoofer right here um, and but we're going to build out a box that basically comes out to here runs all the way the width of the truck allows us to use this area up here as storage and that area over there as storage now putting a 12 inch sub in the back of a truck is always a bit of an endeavor so Unfortunately, I don't have the subwoofer here yet due to the beauty of the postal system, but we do know it's an 11 and a quarter inch uh, cutout diameter, so basically right here. Uh, and so it's gonna be real tight in this kind of valley here, but what we're gonna do is we're going to actually build this, and so if you look at this from the vertical plumb drop, we're actually gonna put our piece of wood right here. So the wood is gonna actually stick out a little bit further from the seat. So there we go, we uh, marked out a center line. It's exactly 58 inches from the inside of the door sill to the inside of the door sill. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a piece of cardboard. Uh, we're gonna cut it to as long as we can, basically. You try to get uh, a full 58 inches out of it. And then we're gonna trim that cardboard so that it basically fits exactly right here. And that way we can get the dimensions for this tunnel correct. So this is the part that takes the longest because you really wanna take your time and for every minute you invest here trimming the cardboard, it's gonna make it a hell of a lot easier. Cause it's a lot easier to trim cardboard with a pair of scissors than it is to trim uh, MDF. So as you can see, we've got really good tight fitting lines here. Uh, fits right there, right there, right there. And the whole point is that you really want this seat to rest on this. Uh, this is gonna be the highest point. The inside walls are gonna bolt inside of here. So this is going to be an outside edge, and this right here is going to be an outside edge because the top of this is going to be underneath the seat. So these are the templates, just to show you guys kind of some of the dimensions. Alright, so there's kind of our layout. This is going to be our subwoofer area. This is an arbitrary line I drew where this ends. Um, and you can see these are the curved lines that I traced in, and then these are the straight lines I added afterwards to just give it kind of a cleaner profile. Uh, if it puckers from the carpet a little bit, it's fine because when we wrap it with uh, more carpet, all that's going to disappear. 
So there we go, you can take a look at some of the gaps here. Um, basically this is exactly what I wanted. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is this sharp edge that's going to be here. Um, and we may end up putting some sort of like cover or something on it. But at this point, there's not really a whole lot we can do. i got to maximize the amount of space I have under here. So now we're going to cut ourselves a little bit more cardboard and we're going to figure out the profile this has to take. Because it's got to kind of curve down like this right here and I want it to sit all the way in here. There we go, there's the side piece. Um, there's a little bit of a complex shape to it, so if I pull it out, you can see the bottom corner is rounded, and there's a step right here to accommodate for this piece. Then proceed to lift the seat. You can see that there's no interference. Here's the dimensions of the two side panels, 16 inches all the way down, 10 and a half up here, seven and a half here, six and a half here, and about three and a half for this cutout. So this two sides is symmetrical, we can just cut them out. Uh, back to back and that should make the sides of our box uh, all of this is pretty much gonna have to be jigsaw cut out so there we go uh, you can see the tight nice tight fit right there this is just painter tape to hold it in place until we can uh, nail it all together because I would like to wrap the individual pieces before we nail them together now the only issue so far I found is this so the difficult thing is that represents the cutout for our subwoofer. So our subwoofer has got to sit a little bit up off the floor. You don't want the uh, dynamic actually touching the carpet. Uh, the issue is, is that a subwoofer enclosure to be done correctly it has to be fully sealed. So it has to be, you know, a rectangular prism of some sort. You can't just kind of like build some walls and whatever. It's got to actually have some structure to it. And that makes this difficult because this is a kind of a custom curved shape and so you can't just build a box there okay well after some thought here is the game plan we're going to build a large rectangular enclosure that's 13 by 19 13 and a half by 19 and basically it's going to sit right here is going to be the bottom shelf and now i know what you're thinking you're like max holy crap that's uh right in here you're not how are you going to fit a subwoofer in this well Here's the genius of this plan. I took a look at some of the other designs that are around online, and uh, when you when you get stuck, it's, it's okay to, to steal from other people on the internet. That's uh, actually how this whole internet thing works. And so right now, this is gonna be chilling right here. This is gonna sit right here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use another piece, basically an inch or an inch and a half of plywood, or of, uh, of MDF, and we're gonna basically space this down so that the subwoofer mounts lower because we've got lots and lots of space underneath this line for the subwoofer to basically just chill down here. But this still gives us enough volume and a nice squared off box that's easy to make. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut two pieces, uh, 13 and a half by 19. We're gonna cut our uh, our vertical pieces that go along the um, go along the sides right there, and then we're gonna cut out a whole bunch of uh, 12 inch squares. Now we're almost to the point where we gotta take everything apart and wrap it. I still have one more piece to make on the back side of the box, but before we dive into that, I need to make the uh, spacer for the subwoofer. So we actually have almost five inches underneath the bottom plate. And so we're going to move the subwoofer down. I went to Home Depot real quick. This is the thickest MDF they have. It's three quarter inch. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut three 13 by 13 pieces and cut holes in them for the subwoofer, allowing us to get a total drop of two and a quarter inches. That's going to give us uh, about three inches underneath the subwoofer and about five inches above the subwoofer, which is plenty for a subwoofer that has a 3.5 inch depth, I believe, or 3.7 inch depth. So basically I got to do three 13 by 13 squares cut them out and then jigsaw out the circles not a lot of fun I'm just gonna have to get it done real quick whenever you got to cut a circle something like this out you always want to take a spade bit drill a hole inside and now we have a place for the jigsaw to go in and work our way around there we go is it perfect nope 
There's some stuff I'm good at and some stuff I'm really not very good at. And upholstery definitely falls into the later category. But basically what's going on here is we have a, a piece of carpet that's been cut out here that's basically double the size to allow me to overlap. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a combination of spray adhesive. I have my old can of Super 77, which is kind of like the spray adhesive. And then I picked this up for nine bucks. This is CRC spray adhesive. Um, either one of these is fine. Pretty much anything you find is fine. I also happen to have one of these little wooden rollers for uh, sound deadening material. It just helps you get a good application. And so what you're going to want to do is you want to make this spray, spray this down. And then it's a lot easier afterwards to go in and cut the excess. And then we're going to staple up uh, back edges so that none of the staples are visible. We got our subwoofer with our drop down. We've got the top lid of our subwoofer. We've got our two sides and we've got our uh, main piece. And so that still leaves that one little piece. But now we're going to start fitting everything into the truck and nail gunning it together. So there we go. Our little storage and box and stuff are in here. Uh, so this part closes. We're still going to have to secure it uh, kind of back here somehow so it doesn't move forward uh, off of the seat but we'll figure that out in a bit but this thing is rock solid in here i've got probably a good inch inch and a half from the bottom of this to uh to the highest point of the carpet so the subwoofer is going to go in there quite nicely and so now what's left is we have our our piece that kind of slants down and connects down here and we're going to shoot that in next and then we have to measure out and cut out the piece that goes right here and in that piece we're going to put our um, kind of a subwoofer out contacts so and we're going to run a piece of wire so that once the subwoofer comes in i can just hook everything up to be honest with you now that we use these one inch brads to put this thing in i mean it's not the most sturdy thing ever because there's i mean there's obviously no no tie-ins or anything and it's going to get stronger once i put this board in here but it's actually really really solid and so uh we just got to figure out a way to tie it into the carpet but uh it can come in and out of the truck pretty easily actually kind of from what i'm seeing which is good because i plan on taking all this out and putting in a layer of dynamat later in one of the later episodes so here is our finished box Uh, it sticks out a little bit further forward right here than I would like. It's a little tall for the seat, um, but we really had to get every inch we could for the uh, subwoofer. And I'm happy to say that it's going to sit in there quite nicely. And I may have found a little nook for the amplifier as well. Now, if we go over here on this side, you can see it's nice and flush. You lifted the seat. There's our uh, wire in for the subwoofer. Nice and convenient location. And then all of this area is now storage space. So I can unpack my toolbox and store everything in here and not worry about it uh, kind of rolling around on the floor. So that's pretty much it for this part of the build. We're going to do the subwoofer wiring and all of that as part, uh, a separate part of this project. When I show you guys how to install the head unit and, and all that stuff. So we're gonna do that separately. But uh, if you like my video, please subscribe. This is a uh, multi-part series. I'm going to be doing head unit, full wiring, dynamat, stuff like that. So make sure you check out the other videos as they come online. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. 
Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you guys have done stuff like this or if you have any ideas and stuff you want to see in the future for this truck. Peace.